From the title card revealing Star-Lord's return at the end of Volume 3, to Chris Pratt saying he'll take the part even with a different director, here's what James Gunn hinted about a new Star-Lord solo movie. If you've seen Guardians of the Galaxy 3, you'd know the film closes off with a title card revealing that Star-Lord will be back. We've seen these post-credits title cards since the very beginning of the MCU. They're used to remind audiences that these characters still have a lot of stories to tell, often leading in to team up films like Avengers. Honestly, I was surprised when I saw the card because I really felt like Volume 3 would be the last we'd see of Star-Lord and the gang. Of course, this particular post credit scene didn't reference the entire Guardians team. Instead, it specifically mentions that Star-Lord will return. That's some pretty interesting wording, because it references one of Peter Quill's best storylines from the comics. You see, Star-Lord's often set off on his own adventures, and in the 12-issue legendary Star-Lord series, he heads to Earth and figures out what life is like on his home planet. Granted, Peter's only half-human, but he hasn't gotten much exposure to the Earthling side of his genetics. He's mostly spent his time in space, so Earth will probably feel more alien than any planet he's been on so far. Honestly, I feel like separating Peter from the team is the best way to take the character forward. He's found and lost the love of his life multiple times by this point, and there's only so much emotional toll you can take before you need to make some changes. Sending him to Earth can help Peter determine his own identity rather than relying on the Guardians to give him meaning. Now, Peter goes through all sorts of wacky escapades in the comics, but there's a problem. One of the central storylines in the comics is Star-Lord's budding relationship with Kitty Pride. In case you don't know, she's a member of the X-Men studying under Professor X, just like Cyclops, Jean Grey, and Storm. Elliot Page has already played her in a couple of films, although he was still going by Ellen Page at the time. Regardless, Kitty showed up in The Last Stand as Rogue's rival for Bobby's affection, and she also had a larger role in Days of Future Past. The phase-shifting mutant can walk through walls, not to mention being resistant to telepathy. So what's the problem here exactly? Well, 21st Century Fox had the rights to all X-Men characters and their adaptations, so it might have been impossible to pull this story off for most of the MCU's history. You can't have a legendary Star-Lord story without bringing in Kitty Pride, And if you're including her, you can't just ignore the other X-Men. Thankfully, Disney bought 21st Century Fox back in 2019. They spent over 70 billion bucks on the deal, but I'd say it was worth it. Disney now has the film rights to the X-Men and Fantastic Four, who happen to be way more popular among Marvel fans than Iron Man or Captain America. You've got to understand, Marvel had been selling its IPs off piece by piece for years before Disney came into the picture. Spider-Man's rights lay with Sony and Fox got its hands on the two famous superhero teams in the Marvel canon. So the MCU had to make do with B-listers at first. They did a great job turning Iron Man and Cap into global celebrities, but they still need some of their A-tier characters. With the acquisition in the rear view, the stage was set for Disney to bring iconic characters like the X-Men into the MCU. Sure enough, Phase 6 is starting with Deadpool 3. Yup, you heard that right. Even though the previous Deadpool movies had nothing to do with the MCU, the third installment will somehow take place in the same universe. I'm not quite sure how this will work, but the multiverse has created a lot of opportunities for inter-franchise crossovers and collaborations. I mean, they did it once before in Spider-Man No Way Home, bringing Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield in to play their versions of the wall crawler. Needless to say, that was a roaring success for Marvel. So if it worked once, it was only a matter of time before they tried again. Now that Deadpool will be bringing the X-Men into the main MCU, Kitty Pride can come into play as well, which means Star-Lord's comic book adventure can be brought to the big screen, intact. Then again, should we really be taking a title card this seriously? I mean, there's been no confirmation from Disney about a Star-Lord solo flick. But the thing is, James Gunn revealed his vision for the project on a commentary track, Volume 3's digital release came with a lot of bonus content, including a commentary track featuring Gunn and Chris Pratt. In the commentary, the pair discussed their love for the Star-Lord character, and they confirmed that any solo film will be based on the legendary Star-Lord story arc, called it. Pratt and Gunn expanded on this a bit, saying that they liked the idea of Star-Lord trying to adapt on Earth. 
He'd be a real fish out of the water with his feet on solid land, because he's used to being cooped up in spaceships and traveling across the universe. There's a lot of potential for comedy here, with Star-Lord struggling to accomplish even the most basic of tasks. He also has a pretty old-fashioned idea of pop culture, because I doubt he's heard any music that didn't come out in the 80s, so a Star-Lord solo flick could really honor the legacy of the source material. But there's another problem that we haven't discussed yet. Gunn might be a bit busy considering he's creating an entire cinematic universe for DC. Getting fired might have been the best thing that happened to the director, because not only did it lead to him making The Suicide Squad, but also got him the top job at DC Studios. The bumpy, mediocre DCEU ended with The Flash, and starting in 2025, Gunn will be charting a new course with Superman Legacy. He's also taking a hands-on approach to the rest of the saga, planning out the storyline and its many intersections across film, TV, and even video games. I can't imagine that'd leave him with much free time, so it's safe to say he won't be directing anything for the MCU anytime soon. Even if he somehow magically found an opening in his schedule, I seriously doubt Warner Brothers would be keen on their golden boy crossing the aisle. At worst, this would be a violation of his exclusivity clause, and if his contract doesn't have one of those, it'd be a bad look at best. If a Star-Lord solo flick gets greenlit, and that's a big if, it's almost certain that someone else will have to direct it. I have to wonder, can the project even work without James Gunn? Like, the director's singular vision was critical to making Volume 1 successful, not to mention it completely changed Marvel movies forever. His unique brand of humor wound up in every other project since, and he was so crucial to the MCU that he got executive producer billing in Infinity War and Endgame. The momentum he'd created for his characters in the first two Guardians films was no joke, and it helped create the trajectory for the Infinity Saga's big finale. Are you telling me they can get the same results with a different director? Need I remind you, replacing directors is never a good idea. Just take a look at what happened to the Justice League. Zack Snyder wasn't perfect, but he would have done a way better job than Joss Whedon. Besides, Chris Pratt has been immensely loyal to his director for nearly a decade. Would he even agree to the part if Gunn's not in the director's seat? Much to my surprise, Chris said he's open to the role with or without James Gunn. Although he admitted it'd be kinda weird to stick with the character Gunn helped create. Before you say anything, I know Engelhard and Gunn made the character for Marvel, but James Gunn helped transform Peter Quill into the guy we know and love. Pratt's mentioned that he'll need something big to make up for Gunn's absence, but as long as the story does justice to the original trilogy, he'd be willing to discuss it at least. There's also a chance Marvel might scrap the whole solo film idea instead of bringing Peter in for another Avengers appearance. They're pulling out all the stops for Kang Dynasty, and with Iron Man and Cap out of the picture, they'll need familiar faces like Quill. Personally, I'd love a solo film way more, but I'll take what I get. There are also rumors that Pratt might cross over to the DCU as well, cause Gunn would waste no time finding his favorite actor a new part. Whatever happens, that's all for now. From Chris saying he'd play the character with or without James, to the title card from Volume 3, revealing that Peter Quill isn't gone forever. This was what James Gunn hinted about a Star-Lord solo movie.